Our business is the gate. Hi, welcome to the Lee Kempner House in Galveston. I feel like it's been ages since we did any kind of significant work to the house, other than getting that brick rubble removed last month. But I feel like the band is back together. It is a glorious spring day, and Ricardo and his crew are here, and I've got a long list of things to do and we're ready to roll up our sleeves and get back at it but the first order of business is just getting on to the property there are three gates that enter this property and they all have significant problems we've been using this one main gate for almost everything but the condition issues have gotten so bad on it that it's not even functional anymore and I'll do a video on the fence and the gates later but let's just say for today there's no way to get on site without removing the gate and kind of like the stained glass windows I've been closely watching the gate and it's made me nervous every time we've opened it and the time has come just to take it down and put it in storage before anything really bad happens to it it needs a lot of repair work so Ricardo and the guys are taking it down and they're going to store it in the basement for now until we can afford to get the iron work done. So that was the first order of business. I've missed Ricardo and his guys and being able to work with them, but actually we reunited last week. There was a, it's hard to describe, there was a foundation disaster at my sister's house that required Robert who was the original contractor I worked with on this house I've worked with him for years him he and his crew did all the beam work and the heavy demolition that you saw I in the first year now. videos and then Ricardo also had to work at my sister's for several days it, it was just um, just a mess over there it goes in the category of it's always something so it was fun to be back with these guys and doing some things but I'm really excited that we are back here at the Lee Kempner house getting work underway one side of the gate came right off because it was so damaged the other side we had to look at it and think of the best way to get it off there are a couple of different places we could cut and we eventually decided to cut the hinge pin that was in there it's badly bent and damaged it probably can't be repaired or reused so we decided it was the best thing to sacrifice because it can be replaced easy so ricardo got out his grinder and went to work cutting it off sometimes we just have one big project to work on but other times it's like today i had 10 things that i really wanted to get done on my list some of this is clean up from other projects some of it is new things but a lot of it is related to the fact that we are now able to schedule tours of the house and we've already had one paying tour we have another one scheduled and a couple more in the works so there's a lot of little stuff that needs to be taken care of before that can really happen Hi, Gate. So with the gates out of the way, we were now able to get the trucks inside the property. So it was on to the next project. And that was unloading my husband's truck. It's full of bricks. All these bricks came from my sister's house and the foundation disaster we had there. But we always try to keep things out of the landfill and repurpose and reuse everything we can. It makes good sense environmentally, but it also makes good sense economically. Bricks are about a dollar a piece and the bricks here do not match the original brick of the house but I told you I think in the last video that we're looking at building some restrooms behind the garage we'll build those out of brick they will be stuccoed over to match the garage so it doesn't really matter what kind of brick is underneath so in the truck today I have somewhere between four and 500 bricks that we salvaged and they're about a dollar a piece to buy so that's a considerable cost savings for us i collect bricks all the time anywhere i see them friends and family call me when they see bricks um, there's just no reason to throw a good brick away so the next order of business is to just get these things 
unloaded. With the bricks unloaded, it was time to move on to the next thing, and that is getting this trash pile out of here. I think I also told you we're making a huge push to get the yard cleaned up and to not have trash everywhere to kind of clean up as we go from now on because we're not generating as much trash the way we were when we were doing heavy demolition. And my husband's truck has this long bed, so it holds a lot. And I get to go to the dump free with my water bill once a month and actually I have two water bills because I have the water bill from the Lucas Aterra uh, apartment so the goal today is to get all the trash off the property and get this area picked up so the guys started loading and I grabbed a shovel and started doing something that's been bugging me for a long time and that's this old piece of PVC that I think somebody put in trying to solve the water problem but they didn't do it very well it didn't have any slope on it. It was literally almost on the ground. Part of it was exposed and it had been crushed by trucks and things running over it. And it left these sharp, jagged edges. And I kept waiting to be the person that would step through this and fall and cut myself badly. So I decided it was time to just get it out of there. I didn't know how deep it went, but I grabbed a shovel and started prying it up. And Fortunately, it was just almost on the surface, so it didn't take much to get it up. Ricardo grabbed his sawzall and started cutting it up as I was digging it up and throwing it in the truck and getting it out of there. And while we're doing that, Heather showed up. She was coming down today to try to do some more work on those windows that you saw before. With the truck loaded and Heather started on her project, Ricardo and I went through a few things that needed to be done today so he could get started while Carlos and I took the load of trash to the dump. This is about to fall off and kill somebody. So we need to get it down. It should just lift, lift off, you know, that hinge. Um, and then this is the door, you know, we talked before about raising it as high as we could mm -hmm. so we can have you know room to walk through mm -hmm. and there's nothing really above it yeah. other than that window can it's not can you lay or even you can go up into that relief and go up a little higher if you want to we could just stop the well, uh, as high as possible. So maybe higher than that. Maybe take all that up and put a new arch okay. above. So that the bottom of the arch, so that the bottom of the arch is there. Mm -hmm. more higher, right? Yeah, it's higher. Well, however, however high you can get it. You need a column to put the. Well, it's it just goes here. Yeah, I can uh, open here. Open there. Yeah. yeah. Come across. Yeah, because I thought about taking this down, but water will just go in. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to take this out. We can take this out too, so we can just do flat ground. Mm -hmm. Leave this mm -hmm. and raise this arch. We should have enough okay. room to walk through. Once we pour the floor there, we might put a step inside, step, mm -hmm. step down. And if we if we open this, we can just put something across the back and mm -hmm. brace it to keep vandals from going in. So I don't know if you wanted to start this today or wait until yeah. Monday or Tuesday. Because the I mean we could start taking this out mm -hmm. and cleaning this up. Yeah, we wanna and then we could do the demo in the basement floor today and then that way Tuesday when you did this out you could work on it all at once and get it finished. Let me show you inside what I want to take out. Heather working away. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to damage this because I'd like to leave it. 
but I think this is going to have to come out so we can pour the floor up to it. And then we need to get this thing outside. It's like incredibly heavy. And then I think we need to take this out because this is damaged. And it's it's got a line right here. So maybe from this line over. With Carlos and Richard starting on the basement floor, Heather had her own workstation set up in the basement to do windows. So Carlos and I headed over to the dump to unload the trash. And I just want to show you one Thing. you know no matter what you're doing every job can be done with care and skill and pride even loading a truck to go to the dump look how these guys put plywood up against the window of the cab before they started loading the trash in so if this load shifts none of those boards or iron bars or whatever's loaded in there is going to come forward and break out the window of the cab. There's a right and a wrong way to do everything. And that's one reason I love working with these guys. They pay attention to detail and they're very conscientious about everything they do, no matter what it is they're doing. We just got rid of the pile and here we go again. Ugh, can't win. Well, I've been getting a few more pieces off of these. There's a few that are clear of everything. There's lots of rust and lots of paint making these screws not want to come off. They're making me mad and I'm, right. I'm going to get them off. They're, they're Patience. Not, they're, is a, they're not going to win. Patience is a virtue. <laughs> <laughs> that's well, yes. If, I don't know if so is stubborn, not, stubbornness. Stubbornness, yes. I don't know if that's a virtue. All right, I'm going to go check on the guys. We got really lucky at the dump. There's a huge line. But it was a lot of trailers and big trucks and you know you're supposed to drive around and get in line uh -huh. and the guy just waved me in an empty slot wow yes that never happened so yeah, yeah so you got that fast. we were quick yeah that was wonderful i know you already i know you already think i'm crazy but if we if we cut it here and took this off that would make a great doormat to put down and be kind of fun No, I was thinking cut, yeah. cut here and here, and keep these, okay. and use them in front of the doors, because they'll rust, but they'll last for a long time. I've been eyeballing this thing forever, trying to figure out what I wanted to do with it. Half of it is already outside, and I'm thinking of making a fountain out of it, but this half is actually bigger and heavier and we cut it apart with a grinder the first time but Ricardo used his sawzall and it worked really well his blade was dull fortunately I had a brand new metal blade upstairs so I grabbed that and it actually came apart pretty quick but it was still super heavy even the smaller individual pieces okay well that wasn't bad <laughs> We'll go outside. Put hey. it right here. Oh. A key. Oh, lay down. Got a new doormat. Okay, you're tro having trouble with this one, so I'm gonna put it on the floor so I can push hard because this gets back to our physics. If you push and you don't have the same force coming up, it's just gonna push away from you. You won't be able to get that screw out. But against the concrete, do my wall weight behind it, which is considerable. Yay! You're gonna we're gonna beat these. Painted, rusted on screws, whether they like it or not. We are, we are gonna be victorious. Oh, how about a? Uh, yeah, or or you can do that. That spell mat works. Or let me get you a another little skinny flathead screwdriver. It's loose now. Now you can pry. 
Put the other screwdriver, on, yeah, there you go, under the hinge. <laughs> this is a force of wills. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yay. It is a force of wills. I better hold on to this. I think we've got... Maybe I can get it. You're probably going to need the pliers to finish grabbing it out because it wants to keep dropping. Yeah, let it it drop. likes to drop down in there. Let it drop so I can... There you go. There you go. It just wants to keep dropping back in. There we go. Now we just have one over there. I was done with my chore, so I decided I would help Heather with hers. These windows are harder to strip the hardware off of than you would think. Everything's so corroded and rusted and painted over. It can take an hour to two hours just to get the hardware off of one window. So I pitched in to help because I needed to free her up so that she could help me do a couple of two-man jobs later on. Okay, so we're trying to get this taken out so we can pour the floor. And so Ricardo is busting in to the end of that old cistern. So this is all that pile of bricks they had down there. So yay, this is the last little bit of floor removal, hopefully. And Every, here, come over here. I want to take a picture of you and show everybody. This is new. Mary Bell's been fussing at Ricardo. He's got ear protection on. Hey, put it on your ear. It doesn't do any good to wear it on your head. Time flies when you're having fun and it was already time for lunch so the guys took a break Heather and I ran out to grab some lunch and run a few errands while we were out I had gotten a lead that there's an antique store in town that might have some old photographs of the house so we stopped by there I'd also heard about a really interesting museum at the Galveston County Courthouse Heather and I went to check that out we had to run to the hardware store to get a few things for another project we had going on later and by the time we came back, we were late. Ricardo had already started working, so I missed filming for you guys some work he did in the house and taking out that step curb and getting that shutter down. But Heather and I got to work putting up a new sign. The old sign had the old Restored Lake House YouTube channel name on it that we are doing away with. And so my friend Stephanie had made us a couple of new signs. Again, we reuse and recycle everything. Her husband, Glenn, had scored some old fence boards from a fence being torn down in their neighborhood. He planed them nice and smooth, and Stephanie painted a new sign for us that says the Lee Kempner House. I've had these for a while. I didn't want to put them up while they were working on the sidewalk because, sure enough, concrete was splattered all over the old sign, destroying it. So I didn't film this either, but the city crew was here today 
finishing up the sidewalk. Everything had been poured. They were taking out the forms and raking and cleaning up the front. It looks real nice and I'm trying to clean up this front entry because Monday we have a reporter from the Houston Chronicle coming and I'd love for him to be able to walk through the front gate and up the steps and get in through the front door instead of the back. So Heather and I were putting up the new sign, taking down the old Mardi Gras wreath. The sidewalk does look really nice. I'll get a better shot of it next time I'm down there. All right, we got sidetracked by some viewers. Sure did. We put a second sign over on the side street because we're hoping that the Segway tours and the carriage house rental tours will make us a tour stop and they're not allowed to go on Broadway. They have to stay on the side streets. So this would be a great spot for them to sit and look at the house on their history tour. With the sign done, it was on to the last project on my to-do list. Ricardo was still busy down in the basement, I thought. But anyway, Heather and I moved on to the front door. And it's been a problem because somebody kicked in the front door and broke it so it doesn't lock or close. So it's had plywood screwed over it since I bought the house. And it's a real pain to take the plywood on and off to use the front door because it's heavy and it's just problematic. So we use the back door. Well, with tours starting and reporters coming to look at the house, I wanted to have an easy way to open up and use the front door. So I kind of designed in my head a way to add some plywood to the front and hinge it so that we could use the hinges to open and close the plywood like a door instead of just always unscrewing and carrying the big heavy plywood up and down. So Heather and I tackled that project we had a few technical errors in how we thought about doing it and the sequencing but like anything else trial and error we did one we made some improvements so the second side went faster than the first and we used the hardware we had bought on our trip out to lock it in place and secure it so now when somebody comes to the house we can just quickly open up the plywood and open up the front doors. It did involve taking these old screen doors off. Again, you can imagine this house in the summer with no air conditioning and needing to open the windows and doors and it's very buggy down here. So I think instead of opening the windows, they had put these screens on the front so they could open the front doors instead, but we won't be using them in the future. We may repurpose them somewhere else. I don't think they're original to the house at all. They were a much later addition, so I don't feel too bad about having them gone. But we came up with a fun idea for the plywood because it will be here a while until we get the doors repaired and all of our locking hardware in place. Heather is a decorative painter. That's her profession. She does some fabulous work and she's going to paint the plywood like faux doors so that from the street they will look like real doors. So I'm excited about that and we'll show you that in another video. And speaking of painting, that reminds me of another errand we ran today. I received a fabulous gift, but this video is already getting long, so I'm going to hold that surprise and tell you the story about that later. But I may give a sneak peek on Instagram and Facebook. So if you're not already following us there, go check those out. Heather and I had gotten so involved in getting the plywood up over the doors that I lost track of time and we realized it was getting late and there was still a load of trash in the truck that needed to go to the dump. So I don't think my husband would appreciate me coming home with the bed of his truck full of trash. So Heather and I jumped in the truck and headed to the dump. It's Heather's inaugural trip to the dump. She's never been. <laughs> and it's, Don't it's, say I never take you any place uh, nice. Oh my God, it smells lovely here. I found my lucky penny at the dump. I can't believe I'm picking it up. It's so disgustingly gross. But there it is. When we got back, it turned out Ricardo had run out of this other list of things to do. So he had tackled demolishing that arched doorway. It was damaged and needed to be demolished and repaired. While we're doing that, we're going to take advantage 
of the opportunity to raise the height of this door a little bit. I can't tell you how many times I have whacked my head coming in and out of here. It's just really been problematic. So I'm glad to get this done. It's our last big well, and never say last because you don't know, I'm probably jinxing myself, but right now it's kind of the last big brick project on the list of things to do. So we needed to hustle and get cleaned up and get everything secured. It was already after five. We should have been on the road. Traffic going to Houston gets horrible, but it was a great day. The weather was fabulous. We got so much done and checked off the list, and I'm really happy to be through with some of the paperwork and back down here doing the physical work at this house. I know that's the part y'all like to see and we hope to be doing a lot more work now that the weather is great. So thanks for watching and we will see you back next week here at the Lee Kempner House in Galveston, Texas.